Hi there everyone, Matt here with TheVirtualInstructor.com and in this lesson we're going to take a look at creating a looser, more impressionistic landscape with pastels. In this lesson, hopefully you'll see that we don't have to describe all of the details to find success. Instead, it's more about locating the shapes of value and the relationships of those values in order to find success. Now I'd like to encourage you to head over to TheVirtualInstructor.com. We have a fantastic membership program which includes video courses, ebooks, weekly live lessons, weekly critiques as part of the Members Minute, and a year-long curriculum for visual arts teachers. If you want to check it out, there's a link in the description below. If you want to check out three of our course modules for free, you can. Each course module includes an instructional video and a downloadable ebook. There's a link for that up in the corner right now. There's also a link below this video as well. So I want to thank you for taking a look and I hope you enjoy the lesson. We'll begin things here in Photoshop and we're going to do a bit of minor editing to the photo reference before we get started. This editing will help us to make better decisions regarding the values and the colors. And I picked up this photo reference from pixabay.com, which is a free resource. We'll start by duplicating the layer. We want to make sure that our base layer is untouched. So if we need to go back and change things, we can do so. Then we'll just go up to filter and we'll select camera raw filter. This will allow us to do a number of things here, just using the sliders in Photoshop. The first thing we want to do is bring up the exposure just a touch. This will help to increase the contrast a little bit. And speaking of contrast, we'll bump up the contrast quite a bit as well. We'll bring up the highlights and we'll also bring down the shadows just a touch to create stronger bits of contrast. We can also make adjustments to the whites and the blacks as well, again, increasing the contrast. Now, in this case, we're going to bring the clarity down just a little bit. This will help to eliminate some of the details and create some more softer relationships between the dark and light values. This is what we're going to be concentrating on mainly when we, when we begin painting the image with pastels. If it helps, you might decide to bring up the vibrance a little bit and bring up the saturation to bring out some of those colors to make them a little bit easier to recognize when we begin painting. Now we can just click the OK button and take a look at our changes. If you want to make comparisons, you can always hide the layer that you've just made the adjustments to to see the original image. And you can see the changes that we've made have really taken out a lot of the details, bumped up the color and also the contrast. Now we're ready to start drawing and for this demonstration we'll be working on Canson Vitant's pastel paper. I'm using the smoother side of the surface. Now I'm going to go ahead and start here with a stick of vine charcoal and we're going to begin by just blocking in some of the darker tones and values that we see. This is somewhat of a form of underpainting, although we're not concentrating on the details, just the big, large shapes of darker values. So we're basically just blocking in the darker values and tones that we see here. We'll also put an indication of the horizon line, and in this case, some of the dark values actually exist on the distant horizon line. We won't forget about some of the shadows and darker tones that happen close to the foreground either. So it's really easy to get overwhelmed with all the details that you see on the leaves, but we're only going to be concentrating on the shapes of tone and value that we see. So right from the start, we'll just begin by blocking in shapes of darker tone. Now we can move our way up to the sky, and I'm going to start here with a lighter blue, just looking at the shapes that are made in the sky. And in this particular case, we have quite a number of diagonals that happen here. This will help to create a little bit more emphasis on the tree in our landscape. You can see here I've switched over to a slightly different blue and I'm using a new pastel for this. You want to make sure in many cases if your sky is blue to maybe choose a blue that's slightly darker than the actual blue that you're seeing. We can always lighten this up with some lighter applications on top. You can see here I've switched back over to a lighter blue and I'm making some adjustments to our sky. We'll use a variety of different colors in the sky as well, although these color changes will be very subtle. Now that we've got the base applications in place for our bits of blue, we'll go back over the top with a very, very light blue. This is almost a very cool gray, and we're just going to block in the shapes for the clouds. You can see here that I'm already doing some negative painting in the mass of the tree, adding some of these light blue applications in where we have breaks within the leaves. Now the clouds of course have volume associated with them as well, so we'll need to think about the light source and add a bit of shadow here to a few of the clouds. So we'll switch over to a lighter gray and place these applications mainly on the bottom portions of the clouds. 
At this point, we haven't done any blending. In fact, throughout this process, we're going to concentrate on mainly adding the pastel without any blending to give it more of a painterly, more impressionistic look. I've switched over to a very light yellow. This is very close to white, but not quite. And this will add some lighter tones and values to our cloud to help create the illusion of the lighter sides of the clouds. Now I've switched over to a darker gray and we'll apply this in just a couple of areas just to add a little bit more dimension to the clouds. Then we'll need to soften this up a little bit because the darker gray is a little bit too strong at this point. So we'll switch back to a lighter gray and work that application over the top of some of the darker grays to soften this tone. Now we'll add a few more bits of blue. Again, this is somewhat of a form of negative painting. We're going back into some of the mass that we've created for the clouds and just putting bits of blue here and there. Our sky is starting to develop and in this particular case we're going to allow some of the orange of the paper to show through. This will help make this, the blues a little bit stronger and help to increase the contrast and add a little bit more visual interest to the image. Now finally we'll go back with a bit of white. We're just going to strengthen some of the highlights and areas. We want to make sure that we don't get too overzealous with the white applications as this can make the image appear unnatural. We want to make sure that the white somewhat blends with the applications that we've applied already. With the majority of the background in place, we're ready to start turning our attention to the middle ground and the foreground. We'll start with the tree since this is ultimately going to be the primary focal point of the image. We'll start here with a darker yellow green and we'll just go over the top of the applications that we've made with the vine charcoal stick. Again, just blocking in the overall shape of the tree here. We're not concentrating on the details, just the overall form of the tree. We'll also address some of the plant life that exists underneath the tree as well with this darker yellow green. And we'll also hit some of the areas close to the horizon line. Now we'll begin working some of the value relationships and this will be a continual process. We'll start with a bit of black and we'll just fill in these black applications in areas where the shadow is the strongest. Again, we're concentrating only on the shapes of tone and value that we see and not really concentrating on the details. We'll switch over now to a burnt sienna. Many of the colors in this particular image have somewhat of a rusty color associated with them, almost an, a reddish orange. And uh, the burnt sienna does a great job of addressing these locations. Just as we added the dark applications, we'll start addressing some of the middle values and lighter tones, this time with a lighter yellow green, hitting mainly the areas where we have highlight. It's important to be patient throughout this process. We can't expect to just put a few marks on the surface and have our tree appear. Instead, it's going to take several layered applications of the pastels to build up the value relationships and ultimately create the illusion of form that we're after. Now with a bit of yellow ochre, we'll continue addressing some of the highlights and lighter tones. The light source in this image is originating almost directly overhead. It's slightly to the left side, so most of these highlights will exist on the upper portion of the tree. We'll also put a bit of this yellow ochre on the trunk of the tree, although we're going to do several different adjustments to the trunk later in the process. We'll add a touch of blue in areas to cool down some of the shadows. Of course, yellow and blue make green, so blue makes an excellent color for creating some of those more natural looking shadows. We'll allow some of those blues to just sit on the surface for now. Now with a lighter burnt sienna, we'll go back and address some of the trunks and branches of the tree. Again, though, we're going to make adjustments to this color. So right now it may look a little bit unnatural, but as we go through the process, we'll slowly bring these applications to a level where they appear more natural. We'll do some negative painting at the bottom of the trunk of the tree with yellow ochre before applying the yellow ochre to some of the locations in the immediate foreground. While we have the yellow ochre in hand, we'll go ahead and make some applications to the middle ground where we see the distant field. 
Mostly these applications are made using horizontal strokes. Then we'll go back to the tree again and apply that lighter burnt sienna in areas again just to bring out some more of those reddish hues. With each of these applications, we're still avoiding doing any blending, but what naturally happens when we apply a color over the top of colors that we've already applied in place is some natural blending will happen. Some of the colors underneath will show through and some of the colors will be blended as well. We'll pull some of that burnt sienna down to the lower portion of the picture plane as well. And the reason for doing this is to ensure that we have some harmony and unity in the piece. Whenever you add a color in a painting like this, you want to make sure that in most cases it's not just in one location, but you can find it in another location as well. That helps to harmonize the image. Now we're going to go back and continue the process of pushing the value relationships. This time we're going to add a bit more black to make some of the shadows a bit stronger. We'll add a touch of blue as well over the top of the black applications. And then we'll use our dark yellow green to soften some of these dark shadows that we've created. We want these areas to appear dark green overall. We can still have some of that bits of blue show through, but we don't want the black to sit there by itself. As you can tell, the black by itself appears a bit unnatural. Now with a very light yellow green, we're going to strengthen up some of the highlights. We'll make strokes that somewhat mimic the shapes of the leaves, but again, we're not concerning ourselves with drawing or painting every individual leaf on the tree. We'll use a black again to strengthen up the shadow on the trunk of the tree and also add a few indications of some of the branches peeking through here and there. Around the edges, we'll give some indication of some of the leaves, but again, we're just concentrating on the shapes. We'll also add a few indications of some subtle branches here and there. We'll work our way all the way around the outer contour of the shape of the tree. Now we filled in quite a bit of the mass of the tree and it's time to do some negative painting to help define the form of the tree a little bit further by adding bits of the sky peeking through. And this is going to really make the tree come to life. So we'll use our very light blue that we used at the beginning to define the shapes of the clouds to just pull out a few shapes where we can see the sky through the trees. We'll do the same thing at the bottom portion with the yellow ochre. And as we do so, we start to see some of the details of the tree, even though these details are still quite implied. Using the black, we'll make a few marks at the bottom of the tree to indicate a few loose branches. We can do the same in the body of the tree, just adding a few more branches in some of those openings where we can see the sky. We'll also add a few more applications of the lighter burnt sienna. And we'll make these applications on the lower part underneath the tree as well. Now we'll turn our attention to the middle ground and the distant field. We'll use a bit of burnt sienna over the top, again using mostly horizontal strokes. Then over the top of this, we'll go back with the yellow ochre and basically blend these burnt sienna applications in a bit. Using our dark yellow green, we'll start creating some of the grass that uh, exists in the middle ground and the foreground. Mostly we're going to use vertical stroking for this since the grass is growing upward. We'll also add a bit of movement, uh, visual movement, as we're creating these strokes. We're going to allow most of the grass blades to kind of bend and curve to the left side. Again, this is going to put extra emphasis on our focal point, which is the tree. So we have these directional strokes or these implied lines that are happening in the clouds, and we can also help to accentuate that with the grass in the foreground by making directional strokes that flow towards the tree. We'll continue to add bits of darker tones and a variety of different colors to the middle ground, including some darker browns. 
And as we do so, we can go back over the top with a bit of yellow ochre and soften these applications. We'll continue to apply bits of our darker yellow green in the distant horizon as well. Again, we're still concentrating on just shapes of color and value that we see instead of all the details. That's perhaps the most challenging part of painting in a more impressionistic style is allowing your mind to, to see the shapes of value instead of all the details that seem to dominate our mind when we look at an image. Now we'll start adding some of the shadows and darker tones in the foreground with a bit of black. And as we do so, we'll continue to make adjustments to the middle ground and the foreground. Basically what we're doing is we're bringing up the value relationships and increasing the contrast as we go. So at this point in the process, I'm going to be bouncing around between the middle ground and the foreground. We've already established our area of focus and now everything else that we're doing at this point is basically just helping to support the uh, focal point, which is of course the tree. We're adding some lighter values here and there. This isn't white, this is a very light yellow. And then over the top, we'll add an additional yellow here in this grassy patch that extends back into the distance. We'll add a few slightly darker browns in areas. And then we'll continue pushing the contrast here in the foreground with a bit of black. Here you can really see how strong black is, is on its own. So we'll go back with the dark yellow green and uh, start making that value appear more natural. In most circumstances, areas that are closer to the viewer are going to have a higher level of contrast between dark and light values. So we're likely to find more darker values closer to the foreground, and this image is no exception. Now with a light yellow green, we'll create a little bit of a grassy patch in between the tree and some of the grass that is closest to the viewer. Again, we're going to make directional strokes that, that somewhat flow towards the tree, again, to create some of that visual movement in the image. We'll start addressing some of the lighter blades of grass in the foreground here with a yellow. Again, we're pulling strokes upward over the top of the darker values that we've already established in place. Again, another lighter green in the area where the light is hitting the side of the hill. And then we'll just continue making directional strokes to create the impression of the grass in the foreground using a variety of different yellows and greens. In this case, we're using a very light yellow green here to create some of the stronger highlights. We'll add a small little grassy patch underneath the tree where a bit of light is getting through. And then we'll go back to the trunk of the tree and address some of the highlights and shadows that exist here. We'll darken up the shadow on the right side of the trunk of the tree and allow the left side of the trunk of the tree to be a little bit lighter. Now we'll add a few indications of some wildflowers with the, just a bit of white, primarily on the lower right hand portion of the picture plane. We'll add a slight darker value behind the grassy patch to create a bit of shadow. And now we're ready to pull off the tape. We're going to do so very slowly and pull the tape perpendicular to the direction that we're pulling so that we don't have any tears. And now our looser impressionistic painting of a tree in the landscape using pastels is complete. If you enjoyed this video, then I know that you'll enjoy being a member at thevirtualinstructor.com. Our comprehensive membership program includes video courses on drawing and painting, weekly live lessons, eBooks, lesson plans for teachers, weekly critiques, and much, much more. To learn more about our program, just visit thevirtualinstructor.com forward slash members or click on the card in the upper right hand corner. And if you want to check out three of our course modules for free, you can do so. Just click on the link on your screen now. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.